Hello and welcome to my basement game room and we are going to discuss a strange topic that I ended up discovering a few months back because of some weird shower thoughts. So due to the nature of the episode, we're gonna bring out our special hats albeit we are talking about, as the title of the video suggests, World War II German equipment, therefore this pre-World War I pickle hub isn't really historically accurate. That's mostly because I'm not allowed to get a, a, a period accurate Stahlhelm. So anyway, so what do German Panzers and Atari consoles have in common? For reference, here is a Atari 2600. Um, lovely wood grain. It's one of the later models, or the later variant, I should say, where it's, this was made in Taiwan, and this is significantly lighter because it doesn't have the heavy-ass RF shielding that early Atari models, or at least early versions of the original Atari model, had. So what German Panzers and Atari consoles have in common is its naming scheme. Let me explain. So, Atari consoles. At first, they were named after numbers. You had the Atari 2600, the Atari 5200, and the Atari 7800. And now we go to German Panzers. They were first called the Panzer 1, 2, which were, you know, light trainer vehicles, training vehicles, then you had the three and the four, which were medium tanks, and and um and then in their in the later years of Atari, Atari started naming their consoles after Wildcats, specifically the handheld Lynx, which was the first handheld video game system to sport color graphics, um and the uh. And the weird, and the weird, uh, 64 bit, but not really, but technically it is because it's actually two 32 bit chips working in tandem with one another, Atari Jaguar. What did Germany name their tanks later on in the war? Wildcats, of course. First, you have the prototype Leopard light tank, which never left blueprints. Then you have the Panther and Tiger tanks which were medium and heavy respectively, and were definitely put into production. The mouse doesn't count because one, it's not named after a wildcat, and two, it never left the, it was never put into production, thank God. So, Atari named their wild, their na they named their consoles after wildcats just as they were beginning to lose the console war. Guess who also started naming their shit after Wildcats whilst losing a war. Germany. Now, what I'm going to delve in is more coincidental but could be interpreted as conspiracy theory. For example, what directly links World War II era Germany to Atari, specifically Atari Incorporated, which was one of two Atari companies that were split out of the original Atari Corporation after Warner Communications decided to split it up into two different companies following the, night, the crash of 83. Sorry, I had to... Something happened. A person was walking down the stairs. Anyway, Jack Trammell, for those who don't know, was president of Commodore... International. He was the guy who thought it'd be a great idea to make a mass-produced, cheap color computer, the VIC-20, which was commercially successful, went on to create a $600 behemoth of awesomeness, known as the, the Commodore 64, tried to make his own version of the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, ZX if you're American, I'm American, but for authenticity's sake, I say ZX, because after all, it is a British computer, 
but then got kicked out. Then he went on to join Atari Incorporated. Now, what connects this man to Germany? Well, he was a Holocaust survivor. So even though he's more of a victim of Germany, as opposed to being a direct link, and thus he's more indirect, but still, it intertwines Atari with Germany in a weird sort of way. Um, so that's really it for for the video. Like and subscribe, comment if you want. If you have an Atari of your own, you can play with the switches. I have a 5200 over there. Don't want to break it out. Goodbye.